I got to tell you, one of the biggest surprises of this early season is the Cowboys are still three and one despite missing their starting quarterback, Dak Prescott. We know he's been on the mend with a thumb injury the last few weeks. Uh, enter Cooper Rush, and he's given them solid performances. Three and zero, obviously, so you can't complain about it. You're getting wins with your backup quarterback. Anytime you could do that in the NFL, it, it's just gravy. It's icing on the top of your cake. Now Dak is reportedly coming back. That that's one of the big things that Skane talked about this week. I don't know if this it's smart to throw him out there that quickly. And wh- what I'll say about it is I'm not too worried about injury reoccurrence with this particular injury, but looking at like Russell Wilson and how he performed coming off the same injury the previous year, it usually takes about two to three weeks for quarterbacks to really get going with this one. I, I think it's more important for them to keep him ready for the Eagles game the following week than it is to throw him out there right away against the Rams, against Aaron Donald, against a team that could generate some sort of pass rush against him. And I think the Cooper rush kind of gives you a better chance to win. If I was the Cowboys, if I was Mike McCarthy, Jerry Jones, all those, I would err on caution here. I don't know about you. I'm always in favor of erring with caution because football is a ridiculously crazy sport. And we, we just watched Justin Herbert play with like torn cartilage in his ribs. And we're just like, whatever. Or that year that Drew Brees had like an equivalent of a car crash level of broken ribs and then played a football game the next week. Like I'm always in favor of erring on the side for of the caution. Cowboys. Like what, what's the worst case here, right? You go three and one with Cooper Rush as your starting quarterback. That's, oh, that's absolutely. Now that you're three and oh, I feel like it eases the blow. Like if you told me the Cowboys were one and two with Cooper rush as their starting quarterback, I, you could sell me more on the urgency to get Dak back into that lineup. But now that you're three and O while he's been there, there's no rush. You can afford to lose a game here and still be good because you really only care about the coming game against the Eagles. In fact, the fact that you got two wins in the division against the giants and commanders puts you in pretty much the driver's seat, I would say, going into the Eagles game if you have Dak ready to go. Yeah, the Cowboys can beat the Rams without Dak Prescott. Like People, I think, thought that the Cowboys would fall apart after Dak Prescott's injury, which, by the way, I still believe that's the case. Like I think that the Cowboys right now kind of mirror what the 2020 Cowboys were, which is like, after Dak Prescott's injury, they had like a revolving door of quarterbacks. They finished six and 10, but they should have finished seven and nine because they kind of just punted on the last game of the season. But basically they were like a four and seven team after Dak got hurt. And I thought that would kind of be if you played it out the whole way, what the Cowboys would be. And obviously the defense beat the Bengals. That one Cooper Rush played fine, but it was like not the last two games. And they beat the Giants in Washington, which I think even downgrading from Dak Prescott to Cooper Rush, you should still be able to beat the Giants. Giants and Washington because those teams are both really bad especially Washington and Dallas is in this weird place where like they can beat the Rams but the most important thing is having Dak Prescott healthy once those later games in the season come around and and like they said it was a six to eight week injury Russell Wilson missed three games when Drew Brees suffered this injury in 2019 he missed I believe five games I have to double check that it was either five or six or seven somewhere in that mix they so, got fortunate you know, they had Teddy Bridgewater too that they could throw in there and he was able to win them some games. Yeah, exactly. Like the basically that's the conversation there is like this is just a procedure to try and recover as fast as possible. It's more about comfort of throwing. And yeah, I'm always in favor of erring on the side of caution there. And, you know, if Jerry Jones has his way, then Cooper Rush is going to be competing with Dak Prescott for that starting quarterback job. But uh, <laughs> I see this was something funny that I thought about every like analyst like someone doing sports radio or youtube like this or a podcast like myself take it easy wherever you get podcasts at some point they looked up huh what if the cowboys wanted to move on from dak prescott and then realize that he has a 100 million dollar dead cap hit this year and next year so there's no chance here's the thing too (laughs) to consider it's not like cooper rush is lighting it up no he's just getting by he's just doing enough to win the games which is okay i mean i'm not asking him to throw for 400 yards i'm not asking him to be the top waiver priority in fantasy i just need him to win football games he's done that yeah no matter what happens and to this point if they traded him right now he'd probably get you a fifth round pick he would probably get you a late round pick if you're jerry jones of the cowboys you do hope that he gets on there before he gets exposed too long because he has some trade value now he's going to get paid by some team to <laughs> be either the backup quarterback or their bridge starter Cooper Rush, you just made yourself a lot of money with these three games. So, yeah, it's not like Dak is rushing out on the field because he's worried that Cooper Rush is going to take his job. 
he's rushing out there because he's a competitor. He wants to play. He wants to be in these games, which I can respect. It's part of being that NFL warrior mindset. You know, you want to get out there and play with your guys as much as possible. So credit to Dak in terms of his football character, his football personality. Uh, I just don't think that he's necessary against the Rams. I'd much rather prefer him in the division game because that's the game that's going to matter. And then after that one, you get the Lions, you get the Bears. You have a time to really start working into game back into football shape. That's more reason for Dak to take it slow. Take it easy, if you will, because he's got space coming up in the schedule that works towards their advantage. There's really no argument you can make to say, we need him in this game against the Rams. We need him to get back out there week five, unless you're just saying he needs the reps to be ready for the Eagles game. That's the only argument I'll hear. And even if he misses the Eagles game, it's not the end of the world. Like they they can take the break. They can let him recover properly. I don't know exactly the medical situation exactly. It's kind of a lot of like following NFL reporters and saying what it is. Like he can take seven to eight weeks if that's what it takes. You the, don't have to rush. The him important back. thing is, can he grip the ball properly? Right. Because yeah, it, we're course. not really worried because even how the injury happened, you, you slam it up against a helmet. It's a freak injury. Exactly. So it's not like we're saying take a cautious because we're really worried about him re-aggravating. If he can't grip a ball correctly, then there's no reason he should be out there. So if he goes out there and he's zipping the ball around just fine, then sure, whatever. You know, just you could start him. That is what it is. But if there's any kind of wins, if there's any kind of, oh, that ball kind of came out like kind of funny. Well, then again, sometimes Dak Prescott's balls do come out like that anyway. But, <laughs> you know. Subtle shot. Yeah, I know. I know what you mean. But like if it's a six to eight week injury, just err on the side of caution. And again, I'm just doing this from an outsider perspective. I don't have the information of medicals, but I also know how football culture works. And there's so much pressure on Dak Prescott to come back that all of the money, all of the incentives, the Cowboys themselves, there's just so much pressure on him to play. And for better or for worse, just listen to the doctors and then listen to a second doctor. Because again, these doctors are paid by teams. You could prevent a lot of conflict of interest if you had NFLPA hired doctors and NFL team hired doctors, but the te- <laughs> NFL won't do that because well, we already money, saw the but... NFLPA fire a doctor this week. So, you know, sometimes they don't always get it right either. We're only human. We don't know how to predict these injuries. We're not doctors ourselves, but you know, if you're the Cowboys, you're in this situation where you Built up a luxury. You have a 3-0 record with your backup quarterback. Do you think the Dak Prescott needs to be out there right away? Drop a little in the comment section. Leave a like on this video. Subscribe to this channel. Follow us on social media from Juju and Kyle. Stay safe, happy, and healthy. We'll see you on the next one.